So there's this guy uh, called Actual Justice Warrior, and he likes to talk a lot about crime and justice and... Uh, you know, I see him getting retweeted by uh, folks like Anna Kasparian. And, uh, you know, maybe he has a good point. I would say, except that I've repeatedly watched his videos in the past and every single one of them is brain dead slop for conservatives. And um, usually I just ignore it because it's, brain dead slop made for conservatives but uh do want to take a look at this because he put out a video less than a day ago called minneapolis has collapsed now for those of you who don't know i i, I live in minneapolis and so this was a bit uh th th this was some news to me um You know, I, I live I live here uh, and uh, it doesn't really seem like it's collapsed. So I, you know, I I'm curious, what does he know that I don't? Am I in danger? Do I need to flee? Oh, my gosh, really? It's collapsed. Let's find out more. Cell phones, receipts. That would be two stolen cars right there. You know, now that Minnesota Governor Tim Walz. Oh my God. A video of a crime. Well, if there's video of a, of a crime happening, the entire city is lost has officially accepted the VP nomination. There's a lot of people talking about what happened in Minneapolis during the Black Lives Matter riots, what walls allowed to happen, but I think this kind of misses the point. It's about what's happening in Minneapolis, what's happening uh -huh. in the Twin Cities, yeah. what's happening all over this country post- Hey, you wanna know what's happening right now in, in like Minneapolis, Minnesota? You wanna know what's happening right now? Are you guys ready to see like the destruction and like uh, terror at play? <laughs> Let's see. I need from like I don't know last last like week or so. Do 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 do. Let's see. Welcome Our back, next everybody. guest is a leader of the state Day and just got back Minnesota from the state Democratic Fair. National Convention. Lieutenant Governor Peggy if, Flanagan uh, is here now. Thanks for being clap. with us here tonight. Thanks so much for having me. Oh. Why, why, why was it playing another video? That's so weird. Thing ...has gotten slower. It's not a referendum on the quality of the show. It's the fact that we're literally, we've all lost collectively 150 pounds from sweating. It's just, it's just, let's get Aaron a mic here. Thank you, Chris. You're the best. Hey, before we introduce, I hope you guys don't mind. I just want to say, because I brought up the heat, I want to give a shout out to our crew uh, who is working behind the scenes, our engineers. They are standing around. I just do this for... The absolute destruction being wrought here. It, it's so hard to even watch the unspeakable levels of suffering. For a couple hours, they have to stand here through the news and everything. They're very hardworking, and I really, really appreciate them on a normal day today a lot. From the American Baking Show audience, oh. give it up for Nicole and Jen, everybody. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi. Welcome. <laughs> Good to you. see you again. Uh, okay, Nicole, <laughs> let's start with you. You've okay. been on our show before. Yes. Uh, and now this is State Fair edition. I loved your baking in the studio, and the State Fair really loves... Holy crap, I just know... Look at Are these all of your ribbons? These are from over the years, so I started entering. Oh, I in. thought these were just from this no, year. I did get, I did get like a bunch of ribbons this year as well, but this is just. Since I love I how you slipped that in right there. Oh no! 
We're getting too good at making cookies, chat. Okay, so I, I'm not going to do the math. Do you yeah. know how many you've won? So, including the ones this year, I've won 26. Holy, Holy moly. Really? Yeah, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. That is a lot. I mean, compared to some of the bakers, it's nothing. But it's, No, no, it's forget about much. them. They're not a guest on my show. You are. <laughs> uh, what did you, can I, yeah, right, Aaron? Have you ever yeah. won a ribbon? No. Okay, I mean, I I've and, oh man, the the absolute destruction. Why? Uh, oh oh God! It's it's the lieutenant governor, Chat. It's the lieutenant governor. She's going to incite BLM riots at the state fair. Everybody on camera. Good thing we have Fox News on the scene. Well, our next guest is a leader of the state and just got back from the Democratic National Convention. Lieutenant Governor Peggy Flanagan is here now. Thanks for being with us here tonight. Thanks so much for having me. Okay, you said you just got back from the DNC. You got to go to Chicago. I have to imagine that was pretty energized. Um, it was incredible. It was a party every night. Um, just joy-filled, people having a great time, a spotlight on Minnesota. It was, it was a lot of fun. Look at the unspeakable amounts of rioting happening in the background. Fun. I'm a little tired, but I'm super excited to be here at the Minnesota State Fair today. I know. I was wondering, and I, and I have to mention, some people are. I mean, certainly the governor's sort of thrusted into a whole new world. You're not in a new world, but you are kind of... Look Look at all of, all of the barricades being erected on the streets by the protesters. They've repurposed vans to block traffic. Taking on two roles now. What has that transition been like? And, and, and are you doing two jobs then? Well, so the governor and I have been really intentional about governing and partnership together for the last six years. So, uh, you know, we literally sit side. Look at that. I, did you see that? Did you see that chat? Together for the last six years. Look at these two people wielding weapons in the background. On camera. So, uh, you know, we literally sit side by side in the, in the cabinet room as we put together the budget and policy. So that is, um, you know, something that I've been, been used to. I'm picking up additional things here and there, but the governor and I are in constant communication. He knows that his number one job is still to be the governor of the state. Uh, he is the governor of the state. And, uh, you know, we've just been talking a lot about Minnesota to the national, uh, national news and telling people about why we've got such a great state. So so you remain in contact about things going on here, policy and that kind of thing and whatever, right? That's correct. Uh, oh. And, you know, he was uh, here last week. We made judicial appointments. I expect you will be here again uh, this week. And last week was a little busy, uh, yeah. but, uh, you know, it's uh, we're making it work. And he knows what his top priority is, which is Minnesota. Oh, my God. Insane. The destruction the Black Lives Matter riots, post George Floyd, the George Floyd effect. And what I open with right there is a video that is perfectly indicative of what I'm talking about. Here you have the police maybe conducting an interview or doing a stop. I'm not exactly sure, cameras are rolling. And while they're doing this, and by the way, even though they're not in full uniform, you can see the vest and it says police on them. Two stolen cars loaded up with kids. We're talking about the Kia boys, the Hyundai boys, whatever you wanna call them, speed past them in broad daylight like it's perfectly normal and the way that the minnesota police tell this woman what's actually happening is so casual and the reason for that is because this has become normalized in that particular city criminality is absolutely out of control and when people talk about criminal justice reforms going soft on youthful offenders this is the result and we've highlighted it time and time again but it's important to go back to minneapolis go back to the twin cities Cities, go back to the state of Minnesota, the origin point of this cancer that spread across our nation during 2020, and look at what it has wrought. Look at what the George Floyd effect actually is. It's yeah. that brazen. It's that common. It's that ordinary now. Now we're going to get into this, but is it though? Is it? I wonder. Oh. Hmm. 
That's inconvenient. Hmm. Huh. I wonder if we look at the more data for like, I don't know, 2020 through 2024. I wonder if we might see some interesting, uh, interesting trends. But before we do, I want to thank everybody who supports this channel via actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. I will give me the money. Give you give me the money. Okay. Well, uh, I wasn't expecting that. I didn't pre-watch this. Uh, girl, he's using you. He he's using you to to like solicit solicit support. No, this isn't me. This isn't me doing a bit. I, unironically, this this is not me doing a bit. Like I can't imagine a stronger condemnation of the current arc she's on. My God. Okay. Stunning new video of brazen kids and stolen cars speeding right past police. Officers say they are dealing with that every day. In oh man. This would this this sure would be a concerning story if not for certain facts that I have yet to reveal. Cities across the metro. The troubling trend took a tragic turn when four kids were shot this weekend. So how can we pump the brakes on these dangerous drives? Look, the answer on how to stop these dangerous drives is not a complicated question. You don't oh. need to convene a panel of experts. You okay. just need to think about uh -huh. when these things were not happening and mm -hmm. realize that if you change the laws back to those laws, that will end up resetting us where we are. Now, oh, obviously, there it? are issues in terms of recruitment. The Minneapolis PD has been absolutely devastated post the Black Lives Matter riots and another incident that... Huh, that's so interesting. In what way? Can you elaborate? that followed the Black Lives Matter riots with that female cop who inadvertently shot somebody when she thought she was reaching for her taser and the effects of the devastated recruitment in Minneapolis Police Department and other police departments in and around the area are going to take a little bit more to undo. Okay, so they've been devastated because the police have been struggling to recruit. Okay, so your, your argument is that there are there are fewer cops and therefore the crime rate has gone up. Than just changing the laws back. Our Uba Ali sat down with a half dozen police chiefs and hit the streets for a story you will see only on WCCO. But step one, the first thing that you should do is think back to a time where this didn't occur and try to make your laws as similar as possible to then. Now, obviously there are issues with the Kia problem. We all understand that that TikTok challenge where they showed that you can start a Kia with the back of a USB cord is a disaster. But the fact of the matter is you need to enforce the law against these people, show that there's consequences because Kias have been all over the world and guess what? The only place where they're being stolen super frequently is in the United States of America in specific neighborhoods uh -huh. and these people aren't even hiding their crimes. When the Kia okay. boys are famous because of the videos that they themselves post on social media and you're still not able to engage them, the problem is you. The problem is mm. the system. The problem is policing. When you steal cars over and over and over again, drive like maniacs, and you get a slap on the wrist repeatedly, the mm. problem is the law enforcement system. This is not hard. In this room, we need answers and we need help. There's one troubling trend top of mind. They're getting younger and younger and they're they're armed and they're committing more violent crime. Children stealing. Damn, how, how much, how, how young are we talking? We're we talking five? Like it used to be back in the day, like, you know, 15 year olds, 16 year olds would steal cars. Now, now it's, what are you saying? 13, 12, 10, 8, 7? How young are we talking? 
surely there's like a limit to how young someone can be and successfully steal a car. <laughs> cars with apparently no fear of the consequences. This dash cam video in Edina shows kids in stolen cars speeding at high rates. Yeah, uh, we've done some uh, in-depth police work and we've determined that uh, we have a criminal ring here in Minneapolis, uh, all suffering from Benjamin Button disease. So while they may appear to be 15 years old, 16 years old, they're actually in their uh, 80s, possibly 70s. Uh, it's a big problem to determine who does and does not have a Benjamin Button syndrome going on. It's part of what's destroying Minneapolis. Ultimately forcing officers to back off. I want you guys to really think about what you just heard right there. This is dash cam video from the Edina Police Department. They approach two stolen cars. Damn. Not Edina. The, not the crime riddled suburb of Edina. Not the suburb of people that would be colloquially called cake eaters by the high schoolers at my high school because they are from such a wealthy suburban district. De not, not Edina, the place that, <laughs> just uh, real quick here about Edina. Oh, not Edina, the town in Minnesota historically referred to by a uh, historian James W. Lowen as a sub sundown town. Huh. Wow, not the uh, not the place that in response to being called rich, stuck up cake eaters by other high schools had a high school of students that responded with like racial slurs. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway. that that's that's some local some local politics for you guys i will never pass up an opportunity to uh mock edina the so two stolen cars flee from the cops they jump the curb and they end up taking off but because they were driving so fast too oh. tired to be funny just take my money bwa very knifey duck thank you for the five gifted tier one subs i very very much appreciate it thank you so much oh sorry for those of you who don't know what a sound sundown town is a sundown town is a place where if you are non-white it would be considered unsafe for you to be after the sun goes down i.e uh, you risk harassment, uh, physical injury, or even death by being in that town after the sun has gone down. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's not, I wouldn't say that Edina today is a sundown town, but I would say that it's not exactly the most comfortable place to be if you're a non-white individual. You know, the kind of place where you walk into stores and if you are non-white and don't have like a white friend with you, um, the people who work at the stores are going to follow you around to see and make sure you weren't stealing anything because that's just kind of their default assumption. It's uh, not a good place and I deeply dislike it. fast and so insanely in this particular scenario the police were according to the reporter 
forced to back off this situation. They were forced to pull back. So if you want to know why kids are stealing cars and then when they well, they were forced to pull back probably because they didn't want to kill children. That's actually kind of a success of the policy, you know, like it they they didn't wind up killing children. I think that's good. And even the police see them, they drive crazy and they speed. It's because the policies in this area, in this state, incentivize them to do so. You can pull over. Yeah, it's almost like having a high speed police chase in a uh, residential neighborhood is probably really dangerous and shouldn't be pursued when you have them on camera and can like identify the license plates and like maybe find them afterwards when they're not riding high off of their crime and actually submit to capture maybe get arrested get a slap on the wrist maybe spend 45 minutes in jail not have as much fun or you could drive like a maniac speed up like crazy yeah you know um you know you know folks how uh when you were like 15 14 13 years old which is kind of the age range when a cop says like they're getting younger and younger i assume it's somewhere in there <clears throat> you know children of that age how they sit down and they think hey should i not steal this car because of the uh increasingly severe consequences that it could have legally speaking you know, all of the, do do those do those children like consult lawyers before they do their crime? Like, no, they just do the they just do the crime because they're children, man. It it's not rocket science. They're not thinking it through. If it had the death penalty attached to it, they would probably still do it because they're children. Well, I guess, yeah, we need baby lawyers now, yeah. Goo goo gaga, your honor. Put everybody else in danger and be rewarded for that. Are we surprised that this is- Also, they're children. What do you think is going to happen to them even if they get caught by the police? They're, they're, they're going to juvie. Like, it's not, they're not, they're not like, what, what? Oh, we need harsher punishments for child criminals? What are you talking about, man? We, we need boss babies. <laughs> what is going on? And by the way, these criminals are 100% aware of this. We heard this from the Tommy G Kia Boys documentary that came out years ago that the reason why or one of the reasons why they drive like maniacs is because the police have to terminate the pursuit. Have you, you ever gotten to a police chase kidding. before? They, chase yeah. they can't they can't chase because they, well, they can, but like look, after you're doing so much danger, it. It's not just a one-off. It's not just a stupid-ass policy that's in Milwaukee that led to devastating results. That People should talking be about how bad crime is today make me crazy. Like, I grew up in the 90s. This is nothing. Yeah, I, I, I grew up uh, when, just out of curiosity, just real quick. Just real quick here. When was Minneapolis colloquially called Murderapolis? Uh, ah, yes. Just sh uh, that's just a few shy of the total killings in 1995 when the city earned the nickname Murderapolis. Because our city used to be so unsafe, that's what it was called. It's not called that anymore, just as an FYI. Goodness.
changed. This is a policy that is replicated in multiple different places. And we keep seeing as a result of that policy, more and more car thefts, more and more people driving like crazy. Yeah. This is called an incentive. Uh -huh. These people are responding to that incentive. Man, I would have a lot more to say about this. Uh, but I'm just going to let him uh, have more rope. How about this as an idea? You get pulled over by the cops when you have a stolen car, you surrender, you get a lower sentence than the person who doesn't pull over, who drives like a maniac and puts more and more people in danger. How about how about we have that and maybe we Okay, but uh that's already the case. Like that that's already the case. The reason police officers don't are are told not to pursue vehicles like that that are driving erratically is because when you put the pressure of pursuit on a vehicle that is behaving that way, it then behaves more erratically, which puts both the people in the car that they are, that are being chased in more danger, the police officers in more danger, and bystanders in more danger, and, and I, I know uh, conservatives care a lot about this, uh, other people's property in more danger. Like, again, this is a news story about teenagers, children, stealing cars, right? Do you think that these are good drivers? Do you think that they're all fast and the furious drivers? Or are they gangly-ass children who haven't finished puberty yet? and don't really know very well how to drive cars. And do you think that they're gonna drive better if they're being in a high-speed pursuit with police officers? Or do you think that that just sets up a situation where they could veer into oncoming traffic and kill like a family of five in another car because of the pressure put on them by police officers? or drive through a local business. Hit a pedestrian. Like, I just wanna point out here that the reason this policy is in place is because we have had that policy not in place and people have died. Untold amounts of damage have, has been done. And it doesn't help to resolve or lower the rates of these types of crimes. No one when they steal a car is like, ah, oh, yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah, man. The police saw me and definitely have all of the identifying information about the car and uh, anything about me that they might have gleaned. And then they're like, I'm, I'm just going to I'm just going to keep keep doing my thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to freak out about this at 12 years old. Uh huh. Call of Duty, uh, not Call of Duty. Sorry. My God, I'm old. Uh, Grand Theft Auto doesn't teach you how to be a criminal mastermind, all right? How do I argue with people who say things like white men are incredibly hated by society? Uh, I, I don't know, maybe point out something about the number of white men in movies. Yeah, every, everyone hates Tom Cruise. It's, it's so, so true, King. So, so true. People hate white people. We will lean towards law abiding rather than lawlessness. Deputies like Mike Vine with the auto theft team are assigned to prevent car thefts and recover stolen cars like this one. So we want to catch the bad guys, but we also want to get this car back. While processing this red Hyundai. <laughs> Sometimes they leave cell phones, receipts. Car. Kids speeding past the deputies assigned to stopping this very act. Question. Just 
just on this bit of video on its own. How do how do the officers know those are stolen cars? Like they are driving very shittily and very recklessly. How do they know they're stolen cars? In this case, Sergeant Vi could not follow for her safety. Look, I'm not somebody who says, look at this 10 seconds of video and that proves everything I've been saying is true. That's literally like the main thing you've been saying for half the video runtime. But if there was ever 10 seconds of video that proved my point, it is right there. Is it? Because uh, let's just take a look at the 10 seconds of video again, just real quick. Okay. Deputies like Mike Vine with the. Oh, the, uh, they, they said it was stolen on the radio. Okay. That clears it up. Auto theft team are assigned to prevent car thefts and recover stolen cars like this one. So we want to catch the bad guys, but we also want to get this car back. While processing <laughs> this red Hyundai. Sometimes they leave cell phones, receipts. That's a kid? Yeah, that's a stolen car. Kids speeding past the deputies assigned to stopping this very act. In this case, Sergeant Vi could not follow for her safety. Look. Huh. You know, I can't. Well, there's a really important part there at the very end. In this case, Sergeant Vi could not follow for her safety. Oh, in this case, he couldn't follow for their safety. Because a high-speed pursuit in a residential area would be unsafe and could kill people, including the camera crew. <laughs> yeah, like... This guy is literally just upset because the local news isn't the show Cops. Look, I'm not somebody who says, look at this 10 seconds of video, and that proves everything I've been saying is true. But if there was... Yeah, cur curse all of these policies in Minnesota that are urging cops to think about public safety. The horror that the keepers of the peace would consider the safety of the public. Ever 10 seconds of video that proved my point, it is right there. These are the people assigned to prevent car thefts from occurring. These are the deputies. They're, they're assigned to investigate stolen cars. They don't prevent cars from being stolen, man. How, how do you think they do that? Do they, they are, are they are they out there doing like 21 jump street programs to like find the the 12 year old car thief rings? What do you think they're doing? To prevent the cars from being stolen in the first place. No, what, what they do is exactly what the police officer said it, uh, to the local news crew, which is they look in stolen cars after one is left somewhere, they look for like left behind evidence to try and see they can figure out who stole the car. That's their job. Specifically, they collect evidence and they investigate who might have stolen the car. Aimed at that task. And what are they actually doing? They're recovering a vehicle that was thankfully abandoned by the car thieves. That almost like cops are more reactive than preventive. Doesn't look all that messed up superficially. But while they're doing that, while they're processing that vehicle, two other stolen. I'm, so I'm sorry, is the car messed up emotionally? Like cars blitz past them putting people in danger maybe could hit a child that's walking a regular person that's walking smash into each other kill the people in the car kill people outside the car and the police do nothing and in fact the sergeant says she can't pursue them because of safety in this case sergeant Vi could not follow for her safety we're not going to chase cars just to just chase a car we're going to set up on it we're going to coordinate and we're going to we're going to try and stop yeah because they take the safety of the public into account so that that car doesn't go through like the wall of a residential home, man. Like.
it when it's best, when it's safest for us, safest for the community, and safest for the people involved. That means coordination with special teams on the ground and in the air. Now look, obviously I am not advocating for the police to engage in something that increases the level of danger rather than decreases the level of danger. But the that's what, no, that's exactly what you're doing. You're upset that they didn't chase those two kids that drove by in the video. Your specific prescription in this instance is for them that is that they should have chased those children. Like your entire point about this particular incident that you have based your entire video around is that they should have chased those children. <laughs> The fact of the matter is, letting these kids drive like maniacs, as we saw on the video, is unsafe behavior. So they could talk about how, oh, we wouldn't want our chase to lead to an accident, but... Yeah. But you can also recognize that there are different degrees of not safe, right? Like, there's, uh, like, like if you're playing with a squirt gun per se uh it might be unsafe to like i don't know put like uh habanero pepper juice in the super soaker and squirt it at your friends that could be unsafe it might hurt their eyes might be a bad idea to do like some kind of like russian roulette game with a squirt gun that has jalapeno juice in it might be more unsafe to play that same game with an actual gun. I, I'm just saying there are different levels of safety. Uh, I would have said acid, but okay. Look, I, I, you know, it's hard. It's hard when you talk for a living and you've been talking for four hours. Okay. It's, it's difficult. Um, all I'm saying here is that there are different levels of unsafe, and when you are talking about children erratically driving, they don't drive better when they're being chased by cops at higher speeds. You're seeing these people drive insanely, and that leads to a ton of accidents. They just talked about how four kids in a stolen car ended up getting shot because they were fighting, presumably, with another gang of people in another stolen car. If that passed by law enforcement... But the main problem there was the gang warfare, not that they were in stolen cars driving erratically. You, you understand, you're, you're now talking about a completely different situation, right? <laughs> and they said, hey, you know what? It would be too dangerous for us to engage in that. And then that ended up being the result. Then your pledge to safety led to four people being shot. Not to mention, if they were moving when they were shot, they could have driven off and hit somebody else, injured themselves, destroyed. Damn, it's crazy that that didn't happen, though. Hypothetically, what if those kids uh, stole, like, uh, flying cars? What if they, you know, th those kids might have broken into a, a flying car prototype and uh, flown into an office building. It, you know, you never know. Anything's possible in Biden's America. Destroyed the car. All these different negative consequences that occur from this emphasis on safety. And by the way, I'm not what, saying... What if those kids broke into the cockpit of a Boeing 747? Huh? Have you ever thought about that? That this calculation statistically didn't make sense with present data, that there were more accidents when police engaged in pursuits than otherwise. But the fact of the matter is, when you change a policy, that creates new incentives. Uh-huh. Okay. But so you're just saying that... Um... Well, let's just replay what he said. See if you guys can catch it. The fact of the matter, there were more accidents statistically didn't make sense with present data, that there were more accidents when police engaged in pursuits than otherwise. But the fact... Huh, that's so interesting. The, the, we're, we're almost two thirds of the way through the video and he has the absolute audacity to be like, well, look, uh, the policy change made sense given the present data that uh, when you take away the policy of pursuing in unsafe situations, less, less children die 
Uh, <laughs> he acknowledges it, man. <laughs> it, this is incredible. Fact of the matter is, when you change a policy, that creates new incentives and humans respond to incentives. And I love that his, his like, rebuff of the actual facts we have about the effects of that changed policy by saying, well, uh, you could hypothetically imagine that this would incentivize children to steal more cars. You know, children. People famous for calculating the full weight and potential consequences of their actions. Children. Very good at that. You know, the, the tiny humans we make that don't have fully developed prefrontal cortexes yet that are necessary for full, fully fleshed out decision making. Anyway and change their behavior. So while it might have been statistically true that police chases were X amount of dangerous, yeah. and that seemed like more danger than was required when they were actually engaging in them, mm -hmm. not engaging in them and terminating chases when drivers act insane behind the wheel has led to this result, has led- Quick question, why is there a skeleton in the background? Like, I know we've been going over this video for a while now, but I've been wondering the entire time. Is the skeleton supposed to be a child that died in a high-speed car accident with a police officer? Oh, it's Ann Coulter. That makes sense. At us to this point in time, where stolen cars, crazy driving are off the charts in your city. So your policy change in order to enhance safety did the exact opposite. And I'm waiting for you. Citation needed though. Like your, your proof that things are bad here is that you can hypothetically imagine an incentive that could have an effect but you're not citing any data because you don't have it. Because if you had it, you would cite it to bolster your argument rather than making the argument, uh, well, I could hypothetically imagine this affecting crime rates. Uh, that, that's interesting. I can hypothetically imagine what like uh, a million tons of ice cream might do to the uh, American population. Doesn't mean that there's a million tons of ice cream uh, slowly oozing to the surface from the inner core of the earth uh, and engulfing all of Minneapolis. I can imagine that be something kind of like a reboot of uh, The Blob, maybe with some more eldritch effects. You know, maybe with a, maybe we can get the studio that did Sunny with a Chance of Meatballs to like go over that one. Uh, you know, it could be a way to introduce kind of eldritch horror to... Uh, to children, I think it'd be kind of cool. Um, but I can, I can imagine that, but that doesn't make it so, you know? It's almost like when you're advocating for changes in policy, you should have your facts. But uh, I think I know why he's not citing any facts, but we'll get to that. You guys, all 12 of you in this room having this meeting to realize that. If we as adults are not giving them any consequences, we're part of the problem too, but actually the system as a whole. So I gotta give credit to the sheriff right here. She yes, we need to strengthen the school to prison pipeline. So true, queen. He is 100% right, dead on accurate. When there's no consequences, that is a failure on us and on the system. And they also talk about this problem where they don't really have a good place to take some of these kids, so they end up getting released. And obviously, they try to bring them home to their parents, or in many cases, parent, because a lot of these people come from single mother households, and there's no consequences for that. And if the parent were capable of actually managing their kid, their kid wouldn't be behind the wheel of a stolen car 200 plus times sure. what 
Witt says there's confusion when children are arrested on where to take them. The lack of facilities, um, you know, we, we don't have anywhere to take them. And there are a lot of them. In Hennepin County so far this year, there have been 475 cases of vehicle theft, more than half, 247 committed by juveniles. And look at the numbers last year, 560. Okay, but does actual Justice Warrior realize that there aren't, there, there's not one kid doing 200 car car thefts like you you guys know that if a child stole 200 cars they would just be in juvenile detention you we have we have that like that the, the, the thing that he's saying isn't happening. Six juvenile car theft cases, the most ever recorded. Damn, that's so crazy. That's that's crazy. Um, Oh wow. Uh there, there's one and a quarter million people in Hennepin County. Huh. It's actually a pretty low rate of theft in the county having a secured facility triaging the kids from there but that's outside of our scope of business and that's why we say the plea again we need our partners to step up now that's absolutely crazy right there over half of these thefts are committed by juveniles and then they show you the numbers from the year before and you see oh wow that's a lot of improvement until you realize that that the improvement that we're seeing is a drop off from the record high numbers in the county so what we saw was an insane spike in all auto thefts then a drop and a bunch of people looking at the numbers from the outside looking at the percentage change are going to say wow what a great job now I also want to point out that those are the complete numbers for 2023 versus the incomplete numbers for this year but hmm, I wonder I wonder uh I wonder why he's me mentioning the these uh the, this data I, I wonder why uh, obviously, the, the, the data is very uh, inconclusive because we haven't finished the year yet. Um, now, just uh, to keep this in mind here, this is uh, what he's referring to. In Hennepin County so far this year, there have been 475 cases of vehicle theft. More than half, 247, were committed by juveniles. Looking at the numbers from last year, there were 566 juvenile car theft cases, the most ever recorded in the county. And, um, you know, I, I just want to point out, um, it's, it's, it, it, it's August. Now, I, I don't know if you guys know this, but August is actually the eighth month of the year. Um, so we're currently on track to have approximately 370-ish juvenile car, ca car thefts, which uh, you'll notice is a lot less than 566. So, uh, Yeah, the uh, the thing that he's complaining about here is actually a drop in crime. It's a significant drop in crime, actually. <laughs> the horror, indeed. It's a drop in crime, by the way, of like 35%. 
anyway. But you could see they're probably on track to do better than last year. Mm -hmm. But last year is the worst of all time in Hennepin County. Again. Yeah, for a very niche particular crime. Which uh, you're very careful to point out there makes me really wonder what the overall crime situation is like in Minneapolis. Clearly it must be bad though, because it's collapsed. Minneapolis has collapsed. Years after George Floyd, years after the Black Lives Matter riots, they hit their peak in 2023. So when you talk about a decrease and how crime get better, remember that report with all the cities about how crime got better, understand that yeah, crime got better in 2023. A lot better. Um, and uh, I wonder if there was something that happened in 2020 that deeply affected the economic uh, conditions of people across all of America and the world that might lead to more property crimes. You know, like something that, say, shut down many industries. Hmm, I don't know. Can't think of anything. COVID! <coughs> oh, God. Oh. I hope I'm not getting sick with something. And a lot of them are right after a dramatic increase that happened not in 2020, but last year in 2023. This hmm. is the same thing we went over with the DC numbers. Again, just going to quietly point out that he's been very specific throughout this video to talk about the number of crimes committed by juveniles, the number of vehicle thefts done by juveniles and not the overall numbers. Hmm. I wonder why. Which was one of the biggest, most dramatic drops in that chart everybody citing, including the Biden-Harris campaign, to say crime is down. They had basically records the year before in certain categories, records in the last 20 years in other categories, then a drop off from that record pace. How do you have an idea of how often this is actually happening? We saw numbers, but how often is it happening? Well, just to put it in context for you, this happened as deputies were processing another stolen vehicle that was dumped, uh, though that particular scenario doesn't happen every day. Just in the three hours we were with them, teams were aware of several stolen cars and recovered two that were dumped. The, the reporter asked, I know we saw the numbers, but can you tell us how often this is happening? The answer to that question is more than once a day, almost twice a day, and for juveniles, at least once a day. And she said this was a unique situation. Oh, wow. You mean in a city of, uh, I'm sorry, just population of Minneapolis in a city of 425,000 people you're only getting one stolen car per day maybe two damn that's crazy bro and really you know we could we could throw in St. Paul uh, not St. Paul we could throw in yeah St. Paul uh, you know the Twin Cities area they, they're they kind of meld together. Uh, th wow. Yeah, how can anyone live in the blighted hellscape where what one car gets stolen a day in a city of half a million? <laughs> because they were processing the dump car they were aware of other stolen cars that were occurring and while that was happening the two cars blitz by them so yeah it's frequent it is common obviously more instances it it's not it's not common like one one theft per day is not common at all man 
in the summer, but yeah, it's a huge problem. So from chiefs to boots on the ground, I think it's safe to say they believe a collaborative effort is the old, is the key yeah. to really unlocking this issue. And we've been reporting, Frank and Amelia, that there's been some rift um, between the Hennepin County Attorney's Office and Police Chief Brian O'Hara. They're simply just not seeing eye to eye. So yeah, they talk about a collaborative effort in order to unlock this issue. That's the key. And honestly, I'm so sick of the flowery language. I'm so sick of the progressive doublespeak. The key to this is to take back the policy changes that were instituted post the Black Lives Matter riot. Which policy changes and based on what data? Again, this has been almost 15 minutes. We, we're one minute away from being done with this. And he has yet to produce any kind of actual data that backs up his points, except to say that, well, sure, Fewer, fewer car, car thefts are happening this year, but look at last year. A lot of kids stole cars last year. But then the, the, numbers, the numbers went down this year. The police have to chase these people. And you know what? If some of the criminals that stole the cars get hurt, that would be a lesson for the other criminals that, that you're not. Yeah, but here's the issue, bud, that you seemingly don't get. Sometimes when police chase criminals in high speed circumstances, those criminals aren't the ones who get hurt to learn their lesson again. Most often, other people get hurt. Other people who are unrelated to the pursuit get hurt. And if the criminals in question die, they don't learn a lesson because they're dead. not going to get away. One of the things I remember in my childhood, not that I was going to grow up and steal cars, was watching police chases. And you know what was the common thing in police chases? So much so that a lot of times reporters will say it. The person doesn't get away. Once the helicopter's above them, it is over. Once all the cops line up in order to block them off, they're going to get arrested and they might as well surrender. They've taken away that rule. They've taken... They absolutely haven't. There have been high profile chases with helicopters, etc. They're just not going to launch a helicopter every single time a teenager like gets into a car for a joyride. Like that's not a good use of public resources. Like, um, we just need to give the police more helicopters. My guy, the police need to know which car to follow with the helicopter. And the helicopter needs to be prepped. It, you know, it needs to be launched. It need, do you understand how, dip, how the logistics of that would work? No, because you have a pea brain. In a way that I Be back when I back when I was a kid, I, I watched the show Cops, and you know sometimes they would have a helicopter fly overhead. You know, some sometimes they would put down road spikes and pop their tires, and you know, sure, sometimes the car would just flip over the the line of police cars barricading the road. Sure, sometimes the the car would just ram ram right into a bunch of police officers hiding behind their cars. Sure, sometimes it, they would uh, veer off the road and go into oncoming traffic or uh, into a public building, but you know what? When I was watching that as a kid, that just seemed really cool. So, uh, maybe we should just let it happen because it's cool. Obvious truth, and then they wonder why car thefts are off the charts and crazy driving is off the charts. But you know what? Those are just my thoughts. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. If you like the video, you show them by leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on my social media, support me via support links. In Huh, you know, it's so crazy that he never actually talked about the data. Uh, he, he mentioned it very briefly, but it's so it's so weird to me.
that actual justice warrior in a video about how the city I live in is completely and utterly in a process of ongoing collapse, um, didn't actually look at the data. So, you know, let's take a look at the, the data he mentioned where like it suddenly looked better or something. Cause I've been sitting on that the entire time we've been watching this video and it's been killing me inside. Oh, Crime fell in every major category in 2023, according to early data from this is from January 18th of this year. Huh? That's so huh? relative to 2022 homicide was down 5%. Car thefts were down 8% and carjacking carjackings 38%. Larceny or theft decreased by 15%. And rape fell by 20%. Man, no wonder he didn't want to talk about the data because the overall rate of property crimes fell by like 15%. That's crazy. Oh, oh, oh yeah, uh, you, you know, it, sure, the data came out for last year. It looks really good, but we don't know where the data is this year. Yeah, no wonder. And then he, like, hurried, hurried past that entire uh, shtick. But, yeah, it doesn't look good for your argument when mid-argument you realize that there's data showing a 10% drop in the crime you're trying to make a gigantic hubbub about. That's so weird. I wonder what, what's, oh, total crime rate hits 60 year low. Huh. Total violent and property crime offenses per 100,000 residents. It fell below 2000 in 2023. Hmm. Enough data is now in to confirm what experts had begun suspecting in the second half of 2023. Crime continues to wane as the pandemic and its associated social disruptions fade into the past. Huh. Last year, it fell to the lowest level since 1963. The crime rate in Minneapolis is lower than almost twice as long as I have been alive. But sure, Minneapolis is in collapse. If I was actual justice warrior, I would be too embarrassed to attach my name to this kind of content slop. And if I was Anna Kasparian, I would be even more embarrassed that I was being used as a prop to get people to subscribe to this absolute hack. I, I, I have nothing, I got nothing else, guys. I mean, like, Violent crime is receding back to its pre-pandemic levels, which were the lowest in uh, 35 years. Hmm, crazy. Homicide is continuing to fall. Damn, that's crazy. Slower than it was in the mid-90s. <sighs> anyway, actually completely and utterly silly.